Good morning and good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are sitting today. And a warm welcome from our side. As uh, you might remember, I'm Gustavo Stasheiko, Industry Manager for the Chemical Industry in Anderson Hauser. And today, uh, you see that we are in a different place today. We are not in our webinar room because we actually want to bring you as much as possible of the process to, uh, to you in these pandemic times. So with me is uh, Luis Menendez. Hi, Luis. Hello, Gustavo. Welcome. And Parker Schultz. Hello, Gustavo. So they are going to be the main speakers today in our webinar. And as you have seen, we are going to talk about inventory control and we are going to talk about IIoT uh, radars or our latest IIoT radar, which is actually one of the coolest things I have seen lately from our portfolio. So I don't want to take more time from, uh, from the speakers, actually. And uh, I think now it's time to start. Volker, maybe you just can give us a short introduction where we are and uh, what this place is about. Yes, so good morning, good afternoon. Well, as you know, now I will take off my mask because uh, now my colleagues are far away from me. Welcome to Anderson Hauer Level Pressure in Marburg in Germany in the Black Forest. And we are inside the tank center where we can show you our process devices our tank gauging equipment, our terminal automation solution. And today we will show you our newest radar, the IoT radar in action and how you can easily permission it. Actually, this is the device and we will now show you a video how this device is permissioned. Hello, my name is Philipp Michel. I'm a product manager at Andresen Hauser. Today, I want to introduce to you the first cloud-only 80 GHz radar on the market, the FWR30. When you open the box, you will find next to the sensor, brief instruction for commissioning and an optional mounting bracket. As you see here, the MicroPilot FWR30 can be mounted in a few steps. If you prefer a different mounting solution, there are various other options for installation. The MicroPilot FWR30 is commissioned via an Atelian Value app or Supply Care Hosting. To register a device on your account, you need to create an asset. To link the sensor, you simply scan the device QR code or enter the serial number in the corresponding field. By entering the measuring and transmission frequency, you set how often you want to measure and in which intervals you want to receive values. Then you name the measuring point with the tag. By setting the full and empty range, the FWR30 is ready for use in no time. Additionally, you can give information about the accessibility of the measuring point. To complete the configuration, keep the button on the device pressed until the green LED lights up. This completes commissioning and the device is attached with a simple click. With the MicroPilot FWR30, it's easier than ever to equip a measuring point with a radar sensor. The MicroPilot FWR30 provides a reliable measurement and gives you all the needed information at any time and everywhere. With our digital services, you have all the flexibility to equip your asset with the functionalities you really need. Thank you, Gustavo. So you saw how easy it is to commission this device. Actually, you just have to either read the code here or provide the serial number for your application. But please be reminded, very easy commissioning it is a battery powered device, and this is the battery size D, so that you can see it in my hand. This is a typical battery I used when I was young for my electric toys from remote control. So, but this has a different voltage. The device is IP6668 rated, and it measures up to 15 meters and has an accuracy of plus minus 10 millimeters. 
operating range is minus 20 to 60 degrees and it communicates with LTE actually with NB-IoT so this is specifically designed for devices like this to be IoT ready for the cloud and it has a 2G fallback mode. As I mentioned before, everything is permissioned via the cloud, so it's very easy. And I will show you now those functionalities, why we really develop it. Now, what we want to actually do is getting a grip on to the neglected inventory, which one we really talked about here. So, Gustavo, can you go to the next slide? Actually, if you know, Amazon Harvard provides loading and tank gauging solution. So here on my right, we have the tank gauging devices mounted. We also have the embedded tank vision system and the PC-based software. And we connect from many remote locations via battery-powered gateways, 4 to 20 signals like level, flow, Modbus communication, totalizers, even via hard communication with local power supply information to bring it in the centralized operation. This means within the supply chain, which later my colleague Luz will show you live. Now, the IoT radar was really designed so that we can connect the information from different locations together because this is a flexible device which can move around and you will get this information into the cloud where it actually is currently. So let's show you this application which we had in mind because we want to get a grip on this forgotten inventory which you find everywhere in every production, every process. Here in our factory, for instance, we are monitoring the chemicals for our production at different locations. This is an IBC container. But one of my first applications I commissioned with the IoT radar is here on the left. Actually, this is at my home, and there's currently an IoT radar mounted where it's monitoring the wastewater from the washing machine downstairs at my apartment, where I'm living together with many families. And you know what happens. Sometimes they have something inside their washing water, which is a little bit dirty. So just recently, I was the victim of this, that this was flooded totally. Good. On the right, there you will see the application I have permission at my father's house in oil tank. And that is also very interesting to see it. But these are only pictures, let me show you this also live in the connection. And therefore, I'm using the field expert. Actually, I'm connecting with the field expert to the different devices. And I will move it forward. You can see our already live data coming. And I will ask Gustavo now, to go online so that we see the same information. What I see on my local permissioning tools, which I can use in hazardous environment. This is a zone two device, zone one device is available. And Gustavo, please log into material.envis.com. And log into our tank center. I think you're already inside. Good. Let's go to the inventory so that we can see that device there, correct? So here you will see the dashboard of some of our connected devices. And the one which you see at my home is the IoT radar down there. But this one we will see later also live in the cloud. So Gustavo, can you scroll down? Uh, let me connect to my device at my father's home. This is making me a little bit homesick when every time I connect here. In the winter time, my grandfather typically asked me to go downstairs and check up on this tank what is the level. Now, as a young guy, I was a little bit scared because the light was not so good. 
and it was pretty noisy and dusty inside. So here I mounted on this tank the IoT radar, commissioned it. Also, I checked how the device will communicate. Actually, so what I did easily is to show that I had no communication. So to start with, there's a picture from my mobile inside. On picture number four, actually, my mobile has no communication downstairs. That is the same like in my home, no communication, but I'm still getting the device talking to this cloud. And what's important for me now, Gustavo, can you scroll down, that I can see the actual readings, the filling level. I have linearized this information. And for me, very important now is the forecast. When my father has to reorder the oil for his heating. And winter is coming, so he is really looking already with the neighbors when they look at the different prices when they order new fuel. But I'm safe until July 21 at the moment, and that's very important for me, and I can inform my father in advance, because please remember, my father is now 68, and he does not use any IT cloud. So I have to call him, fax him, that is the highest technology he's using to provide this information. But let's go in and look around and see how that is providing the solution for all this application, which you can see here. And it's my pleasure now to show you how easy it is for Lucas to access this data because I have pre-commissioned the device and here in the tank center, you see that we have all those kind of devices installed. Here on my right is the tank gauge and control room. We have set up here also a control system with uh, redundant servers and terminal automation software. And the last but not least is here the example of the separation process for oil and gas with gas management. Good. Hello, Parker. Hello, Lewis. Please, I have permission my device. The slide here. And you can please take it over and bring it into your supply chain because I have done my work. I have the information provided to you. What can be done is now please control the resupply of it so that I don't have to worry that we run out of fuel. Thank you very much. So I welcome everyone to our logistics center. I am the logistic manager, or I'm playing the role of the logistic manager today. So welcome to the logistic center. As you can see, I am a logistic manager that has the duties of managing the whole supply chain of uh, the material. Maybe I work for a capital company, maybe I work for the food and beverage industry, or some of the other industries. The, the challenges are more or less the same in the logistics. You have raw materials coming into your, your process, and you produce some ended products. And this is exactly how we want to help. Walker already showed us how um, we can have a, a, get a grip of the information, of the level information. The, and this data is then calculated into volume or mass. And then we can know exactly how much I have in this uh, IBC tanks or with the help of other devices in, in silos or tanks, bigger tanks. Okay, I have this information, so then what can I do with it? We can visualize it also in our online tooling. But now I want to, to see, I am in a headquarter, uh, maybe centrally. So I will enter, I will go to enter. And um, I will like to show you, now we can, Gustavo, maybe show the, the tooling. We, we will focus on, on the tooling now. There we go. Okay, I think we are, we are in. So, welcome to SupplyCare. This is SupplyCare hosting. As you can see, it's a hosted service, as the name says. And uh, we have different uh, tanks. Look, here we have the IBC tank that Volker was showing us. I am on a centralized uh, data center and logistics center. 
And you can see that I have the IDC tank. I will click on that one. And instantly I will be shown by supply here what is the status of the level. And also it will forecast, which is with this dotted line, it will forecast what would be the consumption when it's going down or if it's a waste uh, uh, material tank when it's going up. So it has an algorithm that will take into consideration the last days. Uh, here is showing the, the seven day period. Let's go to the third day. Let's see, oh, you can see there how I can see the history, how I can see the green, the yellow, the orange and red zones. These zones are done and are provided by the logistic uh, people. For example, me as a logistic manager, I can tell the tank how much do I want as an effective uh, working tank, how much I want it as a replenishment point, and how much of this area I want it to be as a dead stock. Okay? You don't want to have too much area as dead stock. This is a common mistake because of not knowing how much do I have or an efficient automation behind uh, the supply chain. Why is that? Because the more dead stock that you have, this uh, orange and, and red one actually, the more capital that you have parked in your tanks. And you don't want that. You don't want to have hundreds uh, of thousands uh, of uh, euros or dollars parked inside of those tanks. You want this inventory to be moving along the supply chain. So let us see more of that one. By the way, on this one, you can see also in this graph, I can grab the battery life. As you can see, is this line here. It's in 100% because Olga probably just uh, changed the battery and the lifetime is magnificent. You can see that for the last 30 days, it has uh, almost 100%. You can see also the angle of the device and you can also track the temperature. The green one is the temperature. As you, you can see, we can clearly see day and night, day and night, and the fluctuation, as Olga said, he has installed this one in the Black Forest here in Germany. So uh, during the night, it goes down, as you can see, it can go to, 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 to a lot of some uh, low temperatures and it goes also up. We have sunny days still, we have some nice temperatures, so you can see all of this. Okay, let's go and see what else uh, we, can, we can do. With the IoT radar and supply curve hosting, we can also check if you take a look at my workplace with the map. Let's check out the map. So, we have a map of the whole world. Interesting, yes, but what can I do with it? I can see exactly from the headquarter, maybe I am, I am originally from Mexico, so maybe the headquarter is in Mexico, but I have tanks all around the world, and I have mobile tanks now with the IoT radar, so I want to know exactly where are my tanks. So, you can see here, let's see. I can see that I have tanks in Switzerland, I have some tanks just in the border, and I have some tanks here, in in, uh, in Anderson House in Germany. So, for example, this is the one that that uh, Volker has shown us. Uh, is one example. Here it is, and I can, as you can see, I can just click on that one on on the application in Supply Care, and I can see exactly what is the status, how much percent I have filled over the, the, the total of the tank of the IBC tank. I can see if it's okay or not. This okay means the uh, delivery status because I can also plan a delivery. I can show you that one here. So, for example, if I know that I'm running out of inventory in the next seven days or whatever, the tool will tell me exactly which time it will it will actually just, it will tell me which time uh, is the best one to plan a delivery. This one has already two deliveries, so I will take another one. I will take this one, plan of disposal. So I will have to, to enter a date in the, in the future. I will put that date. I will confirm. So I have just shipping a disposal on that tank. Okay? How does it look actually? I will go to the tank view. I'll take the IBC tank. This is the look of a plan of a planning. As you can see, there is a small truck on the lower part. That means that I'm expecting a delivery from my supplier 
on the uh, 22nd of the of October at 12 p.m. more or less, and that will mean that the forecasting will have a jump because I'm expecting that I will have more material on that day. So I will come again in this green side up here and on the optimal planning level. That is how easy it is. And not only that, but I can understand also with supply care, I can understand also some other things about my event around the world. For example, I can have the events. The events is nothing else than a planning to my suppliers or my end customers saying, hey, dear suppliers, I need more of this, of this data because I, I, I need more of this material to be replenished in my tank. I am running out of material, so I will be running out in one week. So all of this, you can have centralized here, you can have the planning and you can have this dashboard knowing what can have been replenished, if it happened or if it didn't happen. The measuring device will know if it got to the level of replenishment or not and will send an email automatically to the stakeholders. For example, we use this in, uh, in the factory here in Germany with gel, industrial gel. When we are running out, we send to our supplier an email automatically so that we can be replenished on time and it all, everything works smoothly. We have other tooling here, apart of having reports of all kinds, we have the facility of having for example, uh, totaling. Why do we need this totaling tool? Imagine you have a Now it's back. Welcome back. So, um, no, no, wait. Audio. we are having a delay on the on the line. The audio is coming a little delay now. I think you can try now again. Hello. So, yeah, go ahead. Okay, welcome back. This is the beauty of being live. So that that's not what we want to be live and close to you, our our colleagues and customers. So. Let, let's see now what we can do in totaling. Why do we want to understand the totaling of, of, of the inventory? Very easy, because then I can calculate here I have two tanks, but of course I can calculate the same for hundreds, thousands of tanks. And what's the value of that? For, and that I have an attach for each material. I have a monetary value per liter, per, per kilogram. So I can understand how much capital I have attached into my supply chain at the moment. So how much I have stored or how much I am, I am having part. This is what you don't want to do in a supply chain. You want to have too much capital attached inside of the tanks. You want to keep it effective and cost, cost efficient. Okay, so um, I think we can go out. I would like to give you one example. Like, to start with you, please. Okay. As you know, uh, we have, have been having in the last few months, of course, worldwide a crisis, um, a sanitary crisis actually, and um, we have done, uh, uh, we have been trying to do as much as possible to help with our application. This is nothing um, boring to enters and household. And one good example that we have had is uh, the use of uh, our new IoT radar. Uh, within tanks with chlorine. Chlorine is, is a product that is used to clean uh, every surface, to clean also bacteria, viruses and so on from some sur surfaces and it's used also for water cleaning. And this is exactly the application that we have tested and we have been providing to end customers on these challenging times. And also together with material inventory and with supply care hosting, you can clean up uh, this, uh, this water or surfaces and you can have enough amount of chlorine delivered and you can have the right amount always here. Because now it's challenging. These, are, these times are challenging and you need this to, to be full and on target. That is how we are working and this is, I think, a nice example for the reality we are living today. So, 
Now I'm going to go back uh, to the front to my colleague Volker, and now I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that are coming in the next uh, release. Where do we go from here? So I'm leaving the logistics center now. I have to put on my mask now. So what is coming for the IoT radar now? We are going to have uh, very soon a release for the CSA approval for Canada. We are going to have GPS positioning. At the moment, the radar sends a positioning, but it's based on the on the cellular network, which is good enough for some applications, but for other challenging applications, it has to be more precise location, and the best technology for that one is uh, GPS. Uh, we will have also the, the process mounting, uh, G1.5 uh, thread in T will come soon because uh, we had such a nice feedback from the IIoT radar that they wanted also uh, uh, connected in process time. So we need also the process connectivity. And last but not least, we will also have a very soon solid algorithm because uh, also we don't only want to, to be able to measure liquids, but also to be as reliable as Emerson Houser is always, but in solids as well. So that's it from my side. Uh, I'm back with my colleague Walter. At the moment, we cannot be so so near to each other. So that's why we are wearing masks. Yeah, thank you. So, Louis, I saw how you commissioned the device, how it looks in the cloud. Yeah. And I gave it also to the top management because they are all of processing this information. That's correct. You can do it, and we can also have it coupled into the ERP system. Like uh, SAP, like Oracle, like uh, Microsoft, uh, or whatever it is, with uh, see that there are, are connect connectors. Connect. Guys, um, actually, I have a question from from the from the participants, and and now is the time when when you can ask your questions. Uh, we had some during the during the online seminar, and uh, the question is the following: is related to this to, to connectivity. Um, so the question is, how can we integrate the uh, IIoT radar uh, with existing control systems in, within the plant. So I guess the question is not related to supply care, um, but right. actually is on the integration of the, how, how do we integrate the IIoT radar in a, in a current PLC or DCS system? It's, it's, uh, it's possible, of course. So um, again, we, I like to talk about a solution. The, it's a package, it's a solution because it's an all-arounder. We have the IoT radar that sends the data to the cloud. Uh, after the data is in the cloud, we have, for example, OPC connectivity. With OPC connectivity, you can connect existing uh, PLC SCADA systems, and you can have this data also on, our, on your system. This is possible, of course. We have uh, also the possibility, we have done it also, to, to connect from our supply chain. Uh, via XML or, or IoT connectivity connectors uh, to other uh, systems as well. Very good. For more detail, please uh, don't hesitate to contact uh, your Anderson Houser supplier. Yeah. Okay, so I'm checking if we have uh, any additional questions. It looks like, uh, like we don't have any more, so I'm going to come also in the camera. So I'll be here on the on the background. Thank you guys uh, for, for this really good and practical presentation. So you have seen, uh, you have checked the device. Volker, do you see how it yeah. yeah. is here? Yes. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. The mountain is really extremely linear. Yeah. So if yeah. you just put it on the top of the tank in case you are having a pin or, or a tank to transport, or in such a case, we have also the mountain brackets that Volker showed us before. Supply care is the way to integrate all the measurements, not only of the IIoT radar, but actually all the radars that you see here on the, on the tank, so in the plant. So you see that all these radars can be also integrated um, within the supply care solution. So I think uh, now we don't have any, any additional questions. No. So that is really good. And in case you want to download the brochure that has this, uh, all the documentation, then you can go to the handout section and uh, you can download it from there. Oh, I see another question. Uh, for all these IIoT enabled measurements, data will be stored in Netilium Cloud. So the question is, again, I read it for everyone, is the information from this IIoT radar 
going to be stored in the cloud, in the Netilium cloud? It depends on, on which, it depends really on, on which uh, solution you select. If it's for a small uh, couple of IBG tanks, it's the Netilium inventory, the, the, the first one. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, it is stored, and we can store the data depending on the customer uh, uh, challenge. And we can do it in a couple of months, or we can extend it also for special cases, and also for for the same for supply care hosting. Mm -hmm. Supply care hosting is uh, part of the Netilium cloud, mm -hmm. so it's just a, 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 the, the naming of of the of the product. Okay, but everything is part of the Netilium cloud, and the like Tiger hosting can also uh, manage that one. That is for advanced Good. supply chain solution. So there are different options on where to store the, the data from the radar. Exactly. And, and there is a cloud? Yes, correct. It's enterprise? Enterprise is for, for supply chain only at the moment. Okay. And yes, uh, we have an enterprise solution. IoT radar always goes cloud because it goes through uh -huh. cellular connectivity. That is That's important, important to know. So exactly. even if you are using the enterprise version of supply care, the data from the IoT radar goes to the cloud and then it's pulled by supply care from the, from the cloud. Yes, and at, and at the moment it doesn't have the enterprise solution. Okay. Yeah, always. Oh, okay. So we are basically, if it is IoT radar, we are cloud based. Okay, so now we are being bombed by questions. Uh, which is fine, we are still having time, so the ones that would like to, to stay for the questions or to, to listen to the answers, you can you can stay here with us. So I am going to continue reading. What is the, the server of the team? Uh, do, we have, uh, do we have one single server located? No. We have, we have a, a, an array of servers, we mm -hmm. have redundancy mm -hmm. uh, for Netilion, and again, uh, from my experience with Supplier and uh, Netilion, mm -hmm. we have also the redundancy and the, and the different geographical uh, position of, of the of separation of the server. Perfect. Why is that? Because if there is a, a catastrophe, for example, an earthquake or something like that, and one of the server, is, uh, server uh, mm -hmm. centers is damaged, mm -hmm. We have a, a recovery uh, situation on the other one. Okay, perfect. So the data is always safe. Always safe data. So another question is, um, what about uh, the oil and gas sector? Uh, one of the questions is, um, how would be or what would be an oil and gas application for, let's say, refinery or even uh, not in refinery but in the upstream applications? And I think I can answer that question. Um, we don't really have to have uh, an, an expert here like these two guys that are with me. Uh, you saw the pictures. We are talking about, uh, of course, tanks like here, but also we are thinking on the bins, these, these bins where you transport chemicals. So chemicals are transported actually uh, more and more on this type of tanks um, because it really reduces the, the logistics cost. So that is, uh, that is something that, uh, that, is, uh, that would be an application that is really interesting for uh, if you are in the oil and gas sector. Uh, so another question that we have is uh, let me let me try and just scroll into the questions. We are now having quite a lot. Um, yeah, this one is a really good one. Porter, why are you wearing these clothes actually? Is it because of COVID? No. You can tell us a little more while I check the other questions. Normally, I will tell that when I'm going out and. To the side and the tanks. I wear safety clothes, the safety boots, goggles. I didn't wear my goggles today, sunglasses, and I wear my gloves just to protect myself because it's a requirement of the customer to wear this one. And you're in the field, right? I'm in the field today, so that's the reason I wear it. This is not my normal office dress. Very good. But actually, we wanted to, re to represent the two scenarios or the two type of um, of environments that you, that you have in your plants, either the person that is really on the on the side, yeah, you've been in the tanks, and Luis has been with you uh, more on the, on an office environment where we have the supply chain manager. So this gave me some time to check the some of the questions. Um, one that uh, that I that I find very interesting is what is next with regards to IIoT. You mentioned something already. Yes. So which will be the next device that will be connected to IIoT? Do we have a, Something that we could tell to the audience. Well, we are we are of course working on, on every device. Um, we are working in prototype uh, connectivity for every every of our uh, known devices. Um, of course, today we can connect it. It's not that we cannot connect. We can connect every single device uh, using a gateway, but it's not inherited on this one. But definitely, this 
I see the IoT radar, the FWR30, as as the opening door for battery power and, and connectivity in situ in, in the in the same device. Of course, I cannot talk about everything because because uh, uh, there will be definitely many many of the other known uh, highlights and also coming into the cloud. But today, if you want to connect a little hand, if you want to, want to connect uh, level flex, is possible. If you want to connect the heavy duty uh, tank gauging system, it's also possible with, with our IoT gateway. We have IoT gateways already, like the FXA42, uh, like the FXA30B, and so on. So it's possible today to connect basically everything, but it's not in situ in, in, in the device. It's coming, yes. So, Stato? Yeah. Our companies in the flow division are bringing out the next meter actually for the IoT cloud connection. Very good. So thanks, Volker. So that's the one. That's the one that will come next. Uh, besides uh, the the level portfolio, will be um, uh, a, a flow meter connected to to the Netilion cloud as well. So that will be um, besides the the level portfolio. Um, I I have a, actually now the questions are really amazing now. Huh? Is, is, this is this IIoT radar applicable for tankers? Again, we somebody from the oil and gas sector is asking, can we install this IIoT radar on a truck transporting fuel? Um, yes, we are testing it, but we have to wait until the right GPS position is there because we have this request not only for oil, we also have it for water. And the device is designed to withstand certain Gs. The force, so to mount it there. So we already have it mounted onto a mobile container and on the silos. And for sure, we are expecting then also to mount it onto the trucks. But then will be the question how frequently you need the position of the truck because this will drain your battery very quickly. And the classification of the air. And the and classification. classification. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that, that actually that's really a, a good question. It's a very good application that we are that we are developing. And do we have some time frame when when this could? Uh... We're working on that one because, okay. because there are some other the, the ones that I show you is the ones that are coming in the near future. Uh -huh. And we are working, for example, for this specification for some other type of tanks, even not only the process. Uh, we are bombarded by by the it's being a hype of. People uh, saying I like it, and, and uh, people are creative, yeah. you know, yeah. and they find applications. That's yeah. what what we like to yeah. see. People yeah. telling us, "Hey, I find this application," yeah. and, and we're working on all this. Yeah. So, um, uh, Shakli, you are asking these questions. Uh, you, you are welcome to uh, to contact us, and, and at the end of the of the uh, online seminar, you have uh, a survey coming up, and then there you can even ask us the, the questions in the in the chat box that you will get on the on the survey so just if you have a specific question just let us know there or or we can directly contact you after the online the online seminar um, and i think uh, it's amazing the amount of people that are, that are staying here for the for the questions I, I will just answer the or the colleagues will answer the last one which is related to honeywell so can we integrate so the question actually is IIoT can be integrated into the Honeywell experience this year. So maybe I will rephrase the question it's because it's, it's, too, it's too open maybe. So can we have supply care installed in a, in, a, in a site or in a company where they are running through Honeywell experience? Because that's, that's probably the, 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 the way to go, right? So if you are running Honeywell or any other system and you want to have um, a complete control, a complete overview, as you saw from from my colleagues, on the stock of your of your final product or your raw materials. Uh, I think supply care is the way, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, supply care is a, remember, guys, it's a platform that it's that it's for logistics. So about integration to, to other systems, it's as simple. Uh, all the companies for cross automation and automation in general, they use open protocols like Modbus, like. Uh, OPC, and we have these connectivity possibilities through the, the gateways to uh, supply uh, in, in it itself uh, with the OPC server. Correct. So that that will be the way to go. Yeah. 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 Okay. We actually have it integrated with our local control system. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, 
I was missing one question. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Eric. Um, I was I was uh, missing your your question, and it was a very important one related to the to the development of, of new technologies. When are we going to have a radar developed with LoRa? So low range. Um, yeah, LoRa networks. LoRa networks. So for everybody to know, this is LoRa one or LoRa one. This is the, the, the low range uh, wireless network, which is actually a peak now in the market. When are we going to have this available? Um, Date is second quarter 2021. Okay. We are currently under the testing of our solution. Good. So um, that answers the question. We are going to have it uh, in next year. Uh, you said quarter? Second quarter. Second quarter. So, so roughly. We need to be careful at the moment with all this testing. That's, that's the plan, but you know the challenges right now with exactly with, with the time we're leaving. But but the plan is there, and we are we are really excited because that's that it's good that he he asked because these, these are exciting things that are coming with our very good very good okay thank you Mr Eric for for your question sorry that I that I skip it on the on the list so I think we answered most of them now in the in the last minutes and uh, so I think I think we all want to thank uh, everyone for joining us today it has been uh, quite an active uh, online seminar as you saw and. Uh, and I think we, we can close now. And if you have any additional questions, you just get in contact with us through your uh, local representative or local Anderson Hauser uh, organization. Uh, so thank you and see you next time on the next web, on the next online seminar. Bye bye. Stay safe, stay at home, stay distance.